Okay. Yeah. Ain't nobody else gonna see this but you, right? Guys, he caught me fresh out of soccer practice. I'm sending a disclaimer. <laughs> okay, I have hair. I wear makeup. I have flashes. I'm up here looking like a cute turtle right now. <laughs> <laughs>
respectful enough not to put him on blast, you know, he was in the street saying he left me because I cheated on him. And that was, and, and our son was his kid and all kinds of crap. And I'm just like, like I said, that period of my comedy career, when, that, when I was going through that, defined who I am right now. Because I feel like if I can go through that kind of uh, heartbreak and embarrassment, humiliation, devastation, and come out victorious where now I have bits that are people are quoting back to me about that situation. And I don't hear anymore, you remind me of Monique, you remind me of some more. Now it's other comics being told, you remind me of Coco Brown. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So as much as I hated to go through it, I'm glad I did because I found my voice. I found my brand. I'm one funny mom. I'm a grown ass woman. I've been through fire and I'm still standing. So for me, you know, it was like the test was the testimony and I grew so much. Like I, it's like I shed a skin like a snake. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, I mean, yeah, that was probably the most devastating thing that happened to me in my life. But to be able to flip it to the set, the comedy, and, and to heal, I healed through, through that. My stage was my therapist. And yeah, there were times I was told, you know, oh, you're know, you coming off a little angry on stage. But I had to go through that because I had to find my voice. I just gotta take what? a second. I just, I'm I taking it back. Okay. Yeah. Ain't nobody else gonna see this but you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I look a hot ass it's, it's gonna be on our uh, YouTube and uh, our Instagram. Uh, we have like, uh, it's in the double digits of the thousands of, of, of followers on Instagram. But our impressions are always in the millions. Nice. He caught me fresh out of soccer practice. I'm sitting in this disclaimer. Okay, I have hair. I wear makeup. I have lashes on. Yeah, look at these little pieces of lip gloss on. Okay, I'm sitting in this disclaimer. 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 I love that. I don't realize I'm not being taped to be put on YouTube with no makeup. <laughs> no I'm up here looking like a cute turtle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you. 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 Yes, it's there. It's there. Okay, I have to go outside there. Okay, let's finish the interview. Okay, where we at? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I just... <laughs> you are truly amazing. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. Now, because just from, like, just watching you, like, like as a viewer, like, I've just blown away. But, like, knowing that, you know in-depth like aspect of what you've gone through it just makes you even more of an inspiration to me oh thank you baby i mean i've always felt if your test can be a testimony and if you can help somebody else i guess that's why i'm just unfiltered yeah um when you've been through what i've been through and um and mind you what i went through with my husband only scratches the surface of some of the things i've been through but i have just made a pact in my life that I take it serious enough, but not too seriously. I choose to laugh instead of cry. And when I do cry, I cry real good. So I ain't got to cry no more for a while. You know, I mean, I don't know. I just, people always say when they watch my videos on Instagram, I'm like, oh my God, you're so real. You're so unfiltered. I said, honey, ain't nobody got time to have them weave in place and their makeup on point 24-7. I'm somebody's man, okay? And now <laughs> you going to catch me in this dad's on gray room and my hair up in a bun with some lipstick and some glasses and no makeup. What you going to do? Yes, <laughs> and still get the job done. Exactly. Yes. Now, exactly. since since you're such an inspiration to me, like just seeing you from like Comic View doing your stand up to like the big screen and TV, I want to know who are some of your biggest inspirations. Um, did I put the camera? Oh, Ooh, God, there you go. Okay. Um, my biggest inspiration. I mean, it's funny. I was just watching how Stella got a group back, and I love. It's a stories. classic. I love, like, her character in that movie made me want to be a comedic actress. I mean, like, because I love the fact that Whoopi is such a beast and confident in who she is that she ain't got no problem being a sidekick or the lead. 
Yes. You know what I'm saying? And she can go either way, but and she'll bring the pain every time she does. I mean, <laughs> I love me. I love me some Whoopi Goldberg. You know, um, I'm a huge, huge fan of like some of the Def Jam icons. You know, some more yes. and Adele Gibbons and Simply Marvelous, who just passed away. May she rest in peace. And you know, I mean, Yvette Wilson, who passed away. Um, we've lost a lot of great ones. You know, and you know, the guys wise, I was. I said all the time, I was raised by wolves in this business. When I, when I was in this business coming up, it was male comics who saw something in me that I hadn't even seen in myself, who took me under their wing, and they kind of raised me, you know what I'm saying, in this business. So I tend to, you know, um, <laughs> as they say, put the fear in a lot of men's hearts when I touch a microphone, because I wasn't raised to just be cute. They were like, you cute, you pretty, you sexy, but are you funny? But that was my whole hey. thing, you know. Um, I can be funny in, in red bottles. I can be funny Yes. I can be funny with a face beat and all of that. I'm just I'm not not up here for show, honey. I can go to go to with any, anybody. You know, I ain't never scared. But I mean, of course, you know the icons: Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Rodney Dangerfield. Yes. You know, Sam Kinison. I mean, Lenny Bruce. I mean, Flip Wilson, Paul Mooney, Dick Gregory. I can go down the list. Yes. All the influences that I've been fortunate enough to either witness personally or study. I love that. Mm -hmm. And we have lost so many. Bless the, bless the hearts. God rest our souls. Um, yeah. What I love about your comedic style is that it's kind of, me personally, it's unlike anything I've ever seen, like any other comedian do. Like, it's it's like real talk, but funny real talk. You know, the, like the way you do comedy is just so unique to you and so special. I love it. Um, I wonder if, and I know sometimes you say it's kind of like you are on stage reading pages of your diary. Um. <laughs> yeah, seriously, seriously. I mean, I'm having a conversation with my audience. I'm not out there to yes. market to them and speak to them. I mean, I'm not there to just yell at them or whatever. I'm there to have a conversation with my audience. Yes. Is there anything that you uh, may have said or shared and you're like, oh, that was a little too too much. I, I wish I would have took that back. Could you share? <laughs> Could you shed some light on it? <laughs> when I was going through my divorce, um, I guess very early onset bitter stages, I uh, tended to talk about sex with my ex-husband and it wasn't great. And I feel like, dang, maybe I shouldn't have went there. You know what I mean? It was a little too personal. Because I mean, in the end, I'm just looking at me like, well, you the dumb heifer that kept laying down with him and had a baby. Even though it was funny. Yeah. You know, but, um, and then, like, you know, there are jokes that I used to do about my marriage ending, and, 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 and I went through a phase of bashing my ex-husband. I would be lying if I said I didn't. I don't even tell those jokes. Because I'm, I'm healed. I'm over it. You know? My only concern is, does the check come on the 15th? Do you see your son? Hey. <laughs> You're real tall. How about that? Ooh we? Okay, so... Back, back to you. Enough of, enough of that. Uh, he who shall not be named. What? Okay, okay. It was, I mean, maybe think about some things that I'm gonna bury, but I'm gonna tell you. So, remember when Foxy Brown was real hot? Yes, El Nana. Mm -hmm. and, and remember she had that video where she had the adventure for, but she had a gut, right? Mm -hmm. just, just a little. I used to do it. I closed and bit, and the first joke that ever got me a standing ovation. I would turn my back to the audience, put my shirt up in my bra, pull my pants down, let my gut out, and dance to Foxy Brown. <laughs> First standing ovation. But I look back on that joke. Oh my God, I would never. I would never. <laughs> Ever. If you to anyone again, I said, oh my God, what the hell was I thinking? I was like, thank God back then, all people had was two-way pages. <laughs> But yeah, that was one joke. I was like, "What the hell was I thinking?" Oh man, I wish YouTube. But it did give me my first standing ovation. I wish YouTube had that clip somewhere. Oh gosh. Nobody, <laughs> nobody, nobody, nobody had phones because they had rich people and they had no cameras. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I, I, I'm imagining it, and that's all I need. I'm good. I'm, that's okay. yeah. Um, so from then to now, uh, you've gone through so much and have just conquered so much. I hear that you are now working on an autobiography and a one-woman show uh, titled Confessions of a Suicidal Diva. Now, what's so funny, that show ended up getting turned into my autobiography. 
Ah. So that's what you do with the woman on the show right now. I'm writing the book. I love that. And it's basically a journey through um, how a little girl from Newport News, Virginia, that was a, a debutante and in Cotillions, ended up being Coco Brown, the comedian. Yes. And, you know, and how I was supposed to be this little dainty little lady, and now I'm on stage saying some really crazy crap. But it's also all the things in between of how I got here and how I've survived the hate, I've survived the heartbreak, I've survived... Um, things that, you know, uh, I'm going to reveal in this book that people are going to be like, whoa, yes. you know, um, but it's about you can overcome it if you just make one choice and that's the choice to overcome it. I love, that's a, that's a word. <laughs> Shabbat, yes, hallelujah. Because <laughs> you, And you just answered my next question, because uh, I was going to ask what that process has been like. Also, how did that title even come about? What what inspired that specifically? Like, that's a that's a very in-depth well, title. Well, um, it's funny, but not funny, but it's yeah. funny. Well, um, a few years back, a um, few, few, few years back, when I first moved to L.A., I had hit a, a rough patch where I just questioned everything. Everything about my life, every choice I made, what was I doing, like just really was just lost. And um, I decided I was going to take my own life. And I literally was like, I'm tired of fronting. I'm tired of wearing this mask. Like, I'm always together. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm lonely. I'm broken. Nobody really cares. All they care is about funny. So I decided to end it. And um, I wrote a letter. And I took a bottle of pills and drank some wine and went to sleep. Woke up 16 hours later and was like, hold up, this is, this, this, this is heaven, like my bedroom. And, and I was like, what the hell, I'm supposed to be dead. <laughs> and I looked at the pills and the pills had expired two years, <laughs> two years prior. Funny but not funny, but something in me clicked at that moment that said, wait a minute. He didn't let me die. I'm supposed to be here for something. I didn't know what, but I said, I'm going to try to figure it out. And I just turned over a leaf. And the thing is, I've turned over so many leaves. I've had so many epiphanies and revelations. I mean, I tell people all the time, a light bulb comes on when you're 25. A light bulb comes on when yes. you're 30. A light bulb comes on when you're 35. A light bulb comes on when you're 40. A light bulb comes on when you're 35, and so on and so on. So every, I would say every five years, there's like an epiphany, eureka moment where I look back on the last five years and like, okay, we can't be doing that or whatever. So it's like it's a constant learning and a, and, and a process and a constant growing and evolving. And I used to fight it because I didn't understand it, but now I just let it happen. It just is what it is. Like, I know I'm not even the same woman I was a year ago. And it's not about being fake or nothing like that. You evolve. Yes. Whoever stays the same for their entire life must be crazy as bad dude. Because you constantly evolve. Things affect you differently. You grow. You let things go. You let people go. You invite people in. It's a constant evolution. That's your life. Until you die. That's Coco Brown. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> My spirit is touched a little bit. I'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> we're good. I'm glad I can do that, baby. I'm just saying, you know. Yes. People, people, you know. Yes, I'm doing an interview. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My so fun. Oh. <laughs> but um, I put the light on and you know, like, but um. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, you know, it's um, it just people think comedians are just jokes. Now there are some that that is their security blanket, and they're constantly going to be on, and they're never going to be serious about anything. And then there are a lot of us who are pretty dang deep individuals who are extremely intelligent. Um, and because being a comedian, you have to be in sync and in tune with the human experience. That's the only way your jokes are going to work. Yes. And, and if you're sitting up here faking it, the audience can tell. You know what I'm saying? When 
Now, don't get me wrong. We are in a new era now where people want microwave comedy, that one-minute Instagram stuff. Yes. But the true comedy lovers who want to be truly entertained and have a set of some substance, they still come out and show. They do. The youngest may catch up. They may not. Who knows? That ain't my battle to fight, sweetie. I'm going to be me. There you go. And keep on winning, too. (laughs) I mean, really. So, you've worked with... uh, some amazing people, uh, Tasha Smith, Terry Crews, Connie Britton. Um, who would you say has had uh, the biggest impact on you uh, after working with them and why? Uh, wow. um, watching me a long process, a scene, was like a master class. Uh, working with Courtney B. Vance and Sterling K. Brown in People vs. OJ, yes. you can't pay for that type of freaking knowledge. Yes. And, and, and just watching the, the masterfulness of, of these people embodying these characters that you forgot that was Sterling K. Brown. You thought it was Christopher Dart. You forgot that that wasn't Marsha you know, uh, Clark, that was actually Sarah Paulson. You forgot that that was John Travolta. And, like, you really thought, you know, you, you, you really thought, like, when Courtney B. Vance was playing Johnny Cochran, like, boom, like, when I tell you, he was Johnny. He wasn't acting nothing. He was Johnny. So to, to be in the midst of that, and then to be able to work on 911, even though I have not worked on these scenes with Angela Bassett, I can't lie, I studied that woman like a hawk. I, there's three actresses I studied. Viola Davis, Angela Bassett, and Tina Delivered. I studied them. Yes. Like, whatever they're in, anything. I studied everything about them because they're so real that you forget that they are the person they are. You believe they're the character. So, yeah. I mean, I've been blessed to be in the midst of greatness and watch it and learn from it. I love that. Uh, oh, side, sidebar real quick. Um, because I know one of your uh, former co-stars, Terry Crews, he came out with his uh, story of his unfortunate incident of sexual harassment. What was your reaction to that and your take on it? I, was, I thought he was so brave. I sent him a message. I actually okay. sent him a message. And I said, I was like, salute, brother. Kudos, brother. The bravery and the courage that it took for you to speak out. Bravo. Yes. You know, I mean, because most men... Uh, let's be real. The men that normally do come out and say something are gay. Yeah. And it's a gay situation. But for a straight black man to admit that someone did something to him totally inappropriate in a sexual way that was of the same sex, bruh, that was bravery beyond bravery. Same. I mean, this brother's out here that would touch his kids and you wouldn't be able to crack that out of them if you had two crowbars and bagels. You know what I'm saying? So I, I commended him so much for, for being that brave. That, I really do admire him for that. That was really amazing. Yeah, very good. Uh, do you have any advice for uh, up and coming comedians, especially ones who are facing similar roadblo- roadblocks like sexism and uh, racism? You know, especially being a, a, a black female comic. Put your big girls draws on. I mean, put your big boy draws on. Um, I, I'm finding, which is really disturbing, I'm finding a lot of actors and TV personalities and somewhat comedians or just people in the entertainment business. I'm noticing there's a trend now to sell your soul to the lowest bidder. It used to be sell your soul to the highest bidder. But now people selling their souls for peanuts. Like everybody want to be famous. Everybody yes. want to be. They want that quick fame. They don't want to work for nothing. And the thing is, when you get that quick fame, you are putting yourself in a position that you will have to do anything and everything to keep it. Your soul is done. It belongs to them because you've now put yourself in a position that you have no ground to stand on to demand a damn thing. And I just, I would tell anybody that wants to get this business, keep your soul three stacks, keep your soul. Yes. Stop selling y'all souls for five minutes of fame, man. Man. 
Charge your soul, man. Shoot, Instagram fame, one minute of fame, shoot. Not even five no more. Um, okay. sure. I, I hate to uh, hold you up because I know it's, it's no, getting no, dark I'm there. I'm here because my battery's getting ready to die. So I'm going to go back up to my room where it's nicely dimly lit so I can plug the phone in, but I'm still talking to you. We just, everybody's okay. going to be my humble abode because we moved to the house. Yes. There. Just treat the people. Show them yes, how you living. They're seeing Coca Brown's home. Yes. yes. <laughs> like, you know, a little four year action. Yes. Okay. Come through. <laughs> okay, up the stairs. Yeah. All She caught it though. She caught it. Look at God. All right. Okay. I just only have uh, one more thing. It's sort of kind of a game, just you know, just to end things on a light note, because you've been dropping gems like just throughout the whole interview. So I just want to you know lighten it up a little bit. Um, I have this game I like to call In Five. So I'll uh, list off different uh, pop culture or uh, current event topics and you can give me uh, your opinion on each topic but the catch is you have to give me your opinion in five words or less. Five words or less? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, first up, um, <laughs> everyone's favorite rapper, Nicki Minaj. She's been going crazy uh, with her Twitter and a uh, radio show where she's, you know, kind of like going against the entire music industry and every other uh, musical artist. What is your thoughts on that? What comes around goes around. Ooh. There you go. That was perfect. Okay. Um, Michael Cohen and the Donald Trump saga. I ask myself that every day. <laughs> she gets it. She gets it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's a local woman from Seymour, Indiana, who recently gave birth to a 16-pound baby. Like out of her Uh-huh. So never forget him at home. There you go. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, and last but not least, um, Madonna's tribute to Queen Aretha Franklin, who we sadly just lost. Ding ding! I like that one. That that's my favorite, actually. Yes, I said that's my favorite, actually. No more, <laughs> no more white women tribute. Sorry, all you white women just did the hell down. Let the sisters have this hell. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. I love that. Yes, yes. Well, from Queen Aretha to Queen Coco, I'm so, <laughs> so honored and just so thankful for your time. It's I'm going to not cry. <laughs> like, don't cry it means a lot. It me that means the world. I mean it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Miss Coco. I won't. I won't hold you up no you're longer. Thank you. you are. Where are you based out of? Hmm. Where are you based out of? I'm in Orange County right now. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Okay, great time there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, I can't tell you how much of it. Just please keep on. Just I know you will, but just it really just does something just to see you win. So keep on doing that. Keep on doing that. Let me know where this is so I can repost it so I can post it. Okay. I definitely will. <laughs> I definitely will. Man, don't make up. I need those filters on this. You look perfect. I'm telling you, you look amazing. Oh, thank you, baby. Thank All you. Right. God bless you. All right. You have an amazing night. You too, sweetie. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.